Every year, young men and women, mostly fresh out of high schools across the country, embark on this unique journey. Starting out as civilians with raw intellectual and physical assets, they undergo a regimen that would decimate their ranks in the next four years. Those who survive do not just graduate, they emerge as a unique breed of leaders. Formally established in December 1935, through the National Defense Act of the Philippine Commonwealth, the PMA traces its roots to the short-lived Academia Militar, created under the First Philippine Republic in 1898. Under American colonial rule, formal military training was revived in 1905. An officer's school later came to be known as the Philippine Constabulary Academy, based in Baguio City. The PMA supplanted the Constabulary School and replaced its three-year curriculum with a four-year Bachelor of Science program. World War II temporarily halted PMA operations, forcing the advanced graduation of the classes of 1942 and 1943 for deployment to actual combat. In 1947, ten months after the post-war Philippine Republic was inaugurated, the PMA reopened at Camp Henry T. Allen in Baguio City. Three years later, the Academy moved to a sprawling fort in nearby Loacan, fittingly named after the heroic revolutionary general Gregorio del Pilar. The PMA would remain an all-male institution until 1993, when it admitted its first female cadets in accordance with Republic Act 7192. That same year, the Academy introduced a tri-service curriculum catering to the specific needs of the Army, Navy, and Air Force during the last two years of training. Over the years, the PMA has refined a holistic program for developing cadets in body, mind, and spirit to become exemplary leaders in the military and beyond. The program encompasses character formation, balanced academics, military leadership, and intense physical training. The distinct nature of the PMA Leadership Development Program is etched in the traditions that guide cadets from day one to graduation. First-year cadets are called fourth-class men or plebes, consisting of above-average youths picked from a national pool of qualified examinees. Plebes are jolted out of their civilian comfort zones upon their reception at the PMA on April 1 of each year. This is followed by eight weeks of beast barracks when they learn right off the bat if they have what it takes to imbibe military discipline. In essence, they are made to realize that before becoming leaders, they must know how to be good followers within the chain of command. Surviving that tough phase qualifies cadets for incorporation into the Cadet Corps by the end of May. Each plebe is then assigned to the company where he or she will belong. But the pressure from the upper class men does not stop there. Throughout their first year, the plebes have to constantly prove themselves worthy. More than three months into that grueling daily grind inside and outside the classroom, their hard work and perseverance finally pay off. The emotional high point of the first academic term is the recognition ceremony, signifying their formal acceptance to the core. The plebe's shared ordeal serves as the foundation for lifelong bonds within their batch. It also forges a deep sense of solidarity with the upper-class men and with previous generations of PMA graduates who proudly call themselves Cavaliers. On their second year, the cadets are dubbed third-class men or yearlings. Their term begins with a month-long cruise. This gives the yearlings another opportunity for bonding while they enjoy the sights along the Philippines' northwestern coast in the major southern islands. Free of ritual harassment, yearlings begin to focus on developing their academic military and physical prowess while building character and personal relationships. 
they also gain their first experience of leadership as buddies to the plebes. As buddies, they are both the plebes' cadet role models and behavior monitors, ensuring that the new cadets meet the standards of the academy. Cadets who get to third year are known as second-class men or cows. Within the cadet chain of command, they are designated as squad leaders. In the occasional absence of the graduating class, the cows assume responsibility for running the cadet corps. At the same time, individual competition to excel in every aspect of training yields distinct ranks in academic performance. A parallel development in ranking takes place in the cadet hierarchy as well. The second class year also marks the point at which the cadets start to specialize according to their chosen branch of military service. On their final year in the academy, cadets earn the right to be called first class men or firsties. As the ruling class, they occupy the major positions of responsibility in the cadet chain of command, with a class baron at the apex. In addition to the many privileges they enjoy, the firsties are placed in charge of various committees, clubs and core squads. More specialized academic subjects gear them up for their eventual commission as officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Upon their graduation from the academy, they would have proudly completed a journey of leadership like nowhere else in the country. By then, the PMA cadets would be ready to apply what they learned in mathematics, engineering, information technology, the humanities, management, and the physical and social sciences to accomplish any mission. Wielding superior critical thinking and a broad perspective of history and people dynamics, they can effectively manage complex tactical situations. As military leaders, PMA graduates are armed with a core arsenal, ranging from marksmanship and combat skills to map reading and signal communication, to command respect and compliance among subordinates. They are equipped to lead small unit operations, to manage tight logistics, and to train their teams. Even before they are commissioned as officers, PMA graduates would have acquired a thorough grasp of the fundamentals, of battlefield tactics on the ground, of naval and marine operations, and of the principles and nuances of air warfare. The Academy also prepares its cadets adequately for the immense physical demands of their profession. Models of fitness, sports discipline, proper nutrition and healthy living, PMA graduates can outperform all the members of any unit they are tasked to lead while protecting themselves against injury. This sense of well-being is fortified by a whole slew of extracurricular activities that include literary writing, journalism, debate, theater, cadet combo, various clubs and religious organizations. Given this intensive, well-rounded training conducted by a top-notch faculty and backed up by dedicated service support across the Academy's diverse and excellent facilities, it is not surprising that PMA cadets, as individuals and as teams, reap multiple awards and trophies in academic and athletic competitions. Top cadets get to represent the PMA in local and international youth conferences on leadership and related themes. Those who qualify as PMA cadets also have opportunities to prove their mettle in defense and military academies overseas. Taking advantage of international study and exchange programs, some outstanding PMA cadets have distinguished themselves in training programs in the United States, Canada, Australia, Japan and South Korea. Most important of all the aspects of training, PMA graduates are grounded in the time-honored values of courage, integrity, and loyalty. 
They are fearless not just in combat, but also in the defense of their convictions. Their sense of integrity has been honed by their strict adherence to a simple yet resonant honor code that the cadets themselves enforce. On one level, they are loyal to the academy and to their fellow Cavaliers. On a higher plane, PMA graduates pledge allegiance to the flag and to the supremacy of civilian authority. In all these diverse ways, the Philippine Military Academy leaves an indelible, holistic imprint on each of its graduates. By molding exemplary young men and women year after year, the PMA continues to share its prized legacy with a nation that will always be in need of its brand of leadership. In turn, the young Filipinos chosen to embark on that unique journey relish the challenge to transform themselves into multifaceted leaders for the rest of their lives.